Minister, ladies and gentlemen, it's great to be with you this evening and I had the opportunity to speak for a few minutes uh, beforehand uh, with the Minister uh, and, uh, and had the opportunity to reflect on a few of the things he said and thank you very much for sharing with us uh, a snapshot of the effective reforms that are happening in the English school space and I must uh, always now refer to it as England rather than the United Kingdom uh, given uh, the devolution in the school sector. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, there's been um, one of the things that, uh, that Nick reflected on when we spoke earlier uh, was that in the uh, in 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 the upper echelons of uh, English society, whether that be in the judiciary, in politics, uh, in the boards of major listed companies, uh, there is an overrepresentation, a distinct overrepresentation of uh, of students of of of, uh, of students who had attended independent schools, uh, which I think was 7% uh, of, uh, of students in UK schools, yet tremendously overrepresented uh, in, the, in the organs of state uh, and the upper echelons of society in, uh, in, in Britain. Now that, in one sense, is one of the challenges that Nick is seeking to correct in the reforms uh, that he's embarking on in the UK. And the reason I wanted to start there is because I think it is worth spending a moment reflecting on what it is that we are seeking to achieve uh, through our education system. Uh, as Nick also reflected upon the mantra of the former Labor government in the UK was education, 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 yet it seems by the dearth of reform that actually occurred that no one had actually reflected upon what the, uh, what the, what the question was that education was seeking to answer. Now, I think there are two clear uh, goals for an education system. One is equity and the other is excellence. Uh, and the two are closely linked. Equity is of course necessary to ensure that every child, that every student in New South Wales has access to the same opportunities. Uh, obviously we can't determine people's outcomes, uh, but we can provide through our education system access to similar opportunities. And that's exactly what we should be designing our education system to seek to achieve. We should also be thrusting toward excellence. We should not aim for a society uh, that is benchmarked to mediocrity. Uh, instead, uh, as and I noted something else that Nick said in, 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 in relation to this in, in the UK context, is this notion of raising expectations. Uh, because as we reflect upon uh, societies that have floundered or succeeded, they are societies where the gap between the haves and the have-nots did not uh, get to revolutionary proportions. Uh, and that is one of the powerful lessons of 19th century European history, uh, that there needs, uh, that, that any basis of a social contract must recognise recognise uh, the need to ensure that there is uh, a, a modicum of equity in the provision of services. Uh, but also that every society needs to aim for excellence. Uh, unless we reinvent ourselves, unless we keep driving forward, if we become a society of mediocrity, uh, we will become weak, we will become flaccid, we will become, um, we, we will become susceptible uh, to being... Uh, uh, overtaken by, by competitors and, and other events. So those twin goals of equity and excellence must remain at the core of everything we seek to achieve uh, in the education system. And that notion that Nick raised of raising expectations uh, is, uh, is obviously fundamental to that. Jennifer in her opening remarks reflected that reading is a key to knowledge. Uh, and I would certainly agree, uh, because reading is, of course, the fount of the knowledge for, f that can provide opportunities uh, across society and also help us to achieve uh, the, the um, uh, um, excellence in our society. Now, there are two ways in which we are seeking to do that here in New South Wales. One is through the use of evidence, and secondly, through engaging uh, our students. Evidence I wanted to spend a couple of moments reflecting upon. Uh, 
an evidence-based education system sounds as if it should be common sense, but it is reasonably novel. In fact, it was only in 2012 uh, that the New South Wales government established the Centre for uh, Educational Statistics and Evaluation uh, to engage in qualitative and quantitative uh, uh, research, as well as understanding from literature, uh, from comparative jurisdictions, what would work best in terms of driving better literacy and numeracy outcomes here in New South Wales. Given that the focus of the speakers thus far has been on literacy, I'll, I'll focus more on literacy. But nevertheless, it was through the evidence base that was adduced and is con constantly added to and reflected upon by CC uh, that we're able to, for example, uh, devise the New South Wales strategy for numeracy, uh, literacy and numeracy that will guide uh, pedagogy in these areas over the coming four years. Uh, Nick would be pleased to know that uh, synthetic, synthetic phonics is, uh, is core uh, to, 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 uh, the new, the, to the literacy strategy uh, as part of the uh, New South Wales uh, literacy and numeracy strategy. But there are, uh, there are five main elements uh, that the research and the evidence has told us in relation to putting together uh, a strategy to promote better literacy outcomes here in New South Wales. Uh, the first, and this echoes some of the things that Nick's already spoken about, is, relation in, is in relation to early intervention in the early years. And uh, in my few weeks thus far in the portfolio, I've had the opportunity to visit, uh, I think it's now upwards of 30 schools, uh, and that has been enormously instructive because it's given me a powerful will of anecdotes to test against the evidence uh, that I'm reading. But one of the anecdotes I want to share with you was when I had the opportunity to uh, attend a, a, a very low SES school in Western Sydney, uh, where I saw the impacts of early intervention in a, uh, in, a, in a kindergarten classroom. And there I met two teachers who uh, introduced themselves as the occupational therapist and the speech pathologist. And that was news to me from my experience because I thought that they were professions uh, more accustomed to a health setting than an education setting. But when it was explained to me that some of these children, uh, because they had not been played with, had not developed the fine motor skills to hold a pen or a pencil, a pencil, uh, not pen licences yet, a, a pencil. Um, and when it was explained to me that some of these children had seen uh, such trauma that they had difficulty speaking, it was clear to me that that early intervention was crucial if we were to achieve that fundamental objective of an education system of equity, of providing these children at least as good a chance as anyone else in the system. So that's one, I suppose, quite emotive example of early intervention in the early years. Uh, but uh, that is also why, as part of the literacy and numeracy strategy, we've directed $340 million into, uh, into schools that I identified as having particular challenges in terms terms of the literacy outcomes of students in providing extra capacity in terms of instructional leaders to work with teachers in those schools, uh, as well as the second related item uh, in the literacy strategy, which is in relation to a focus on explicit teaching uh, and on, uh, on faster uh, uh, on faster diagnostic assessment. Uh, and I've had the opportunity in another school in Western New South Wales, uh, to, which is also in a, a low SES setting, uh, where I had the opportunity in a private area of a staff room to see a data wall that was being compiled uh, showing the progress of each student in that school in the early years uh, over time uh, demonstrating uh, their, um, the, uh, the, the literary goals that have been reached uh, during the course of each year of that, of that child's progress uh, so that teachers were able to reflect uh, on a very uh, granular level upon the impact of teaching method in relation to the literacy outcomes of students. And also that focus on explicit teaching which the evidence tells us is necessary to get the best possible literacy outcomes. In relation to secondary schools, one of the things that we're focusing on in relation to the literacy strategy is the challenge of engagement in the early years of high school and also the fact that in many cases there is a gap in assumed knowledge in relation to literacy and literacy outcomes uh, between the end of primary school and the beginning of high school. Uh, to identify those gaps through programs like the Best to Start program in Year 7, to identify those students who need particular 
uh, assistance because of gaps uh, in their literacy and numeracy capacity to identify those gaps to ensure that they are dealt with as quickly as possible to ensure that those students stay engaged. Because again, the evidence was suggesting that uh, in those early years of high school, if there was a gap in that progression of learning uh, from primary into high school, uh, those were the children that were at risk of disengaging from the education system. And once disengaged, uh, the evidence was it was very difficult to get them back again. The next uh, point and the pen penultimate point I wanted to make in relation to our literacy and numeracy strategy was a focus on initial teacher education. This was a matter that was actually discussed uh, last Friday by the, by, the, by the Education Council of Education Ministers around Australia and uh, I was at pains to point out that, uh, uh, that we had actually raised standards in relation to university entry uh, for our teachers because we believe here in New South Wales that ensuring that we attract the best and brightest into the teaching profession is, is absolutely crucial and fundamental to getting uh, best, the best long-term outcomes. The reason I was at pains to point that out is because, of course, being a federation, uh, we, uh, we have some challenges uh, if uh, there is not a national approach taken in relation uh, to a focus on ensuring uh, very high standards in relation to um, uh, admission into, into teaching courses at a university level. But related Added to this focus on initial teacher education is obviously the focus on supporting uh, the development of teachers throughout their career. In New South Wales we've developed quite strong regulation in relation to professional development. Uh, however, uh, my uh, initial observation uh, on taking this portfolio is it's one thing to require professional development, it's quite another thing to ensure that that professional development is effective, is engaging and is, is equipping teachers with the sorts of skills that we will need them to have. And, and in some cases, it will need, um, and, and phonics is a good example, uh, where there are ingrained patterns of thought in some teachers that uh, professional development will give us the opportunity uh, to test some of those assumptions about the way in which literacy uh, at an early level is to be, um, is to be imparted. The final point I wanted to make in relation to our literacy and numeracy strategy uh, is that uh, is that of evaluation. Uh, obviously, uh, the the um, the points that I've outlined uh, as to the approach that we are taking uh, will uh, will will need to be reflected upon, uh, and uh, and part of an evidence-based approach uh, is then learning from what, uh, from the practice we are doing uh, and then reflecting that uh, in future reforms. Uh, but, uh, but overall, if we are to achieve uh, those, what I believe to be the twin related goals of an education system, uh, that of equity uh, and of excellence, uh, we need to ensure that we engage students and that we do so on the basis of a clear evidence base. Thanks very much. Thank you.